Again, at Miranda Siak and the Nansalaka, Saxo, Melitam, Yen at a smile, see Gorobel Maha. Such a time, I'm an ombus tam, Staffy tam, Yena Bootali. Sway am Rup, Kadam I am, that art is swa, Padanticum. Once a call Patari be a chap, creeper son be a ever chap, Patitanam, Pavan, a beer, Paisner, a beer, no more. So uh, I'm thankful to the devotees who have set up this program. To organize a program is always very challenging. Uh, we may take for granted, but it's a very uh, tedious service. And because it's tedious, it's very purifying to bring people together uh, to speak or to share on topics in Krishna consciousness. So, uh, majority of you here already know the story of how the residents of Varanasi uh, were converted by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, what basically I have to do is just to refresh our memories uh, about this same incident. Now that was in the 15th century. Lord Chaitanya was returning from Vrindavan uh, en route Varanasi to <coughs> Jagannapuri. So he stopped over at Varanasi and was hosted by some devotee. And at that time, Lord Chaitanya was heavily being criticized by the Mayavadis. The concern of the Mayavadis seemed to be apparently genuine, but it was a destructive criticism. There is constructive criticism and there is destructive criticism. Destructive criticism means you want to bring the person down. You're not really helping the person to leverage the situation. And that was exactly what the Mayavadis were doing, headed by Prakasananda Saraswati. And Prakasananda Saraswati was such an erudite scholar that he was, you know, unmatchable by any scholar of the time. And before we go ahead, perhaps, we need to go into the etymology of, the, of that word, of that uh, Varanasi. Varanasi etymologically is derived from two words, Varuna and Asi. Varuna is a river, Asi is another river. So Varanasi is at the confluence of, uh, Varanasi is at the confluence of uh, Varuna and Asi. And that is how the name Varanasi came to existence, according to the etymologists. We're not very concerned about etymological uh, affairs, but sometimes it's also good to get into, in, into the root of, uh, of matters. So Varanasi has been a city or a place of learning. It was a hub of learning. Steel is very much renowned for uh, uh, the residence of astute scholars, but mainly at that time, Maya Bodies. So, this Maya Bodies, they didn't very much like the idea that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was engaged in Sankirtan. When they see Lord Chaitanya, a young Sayansi, engaged in Sankirtan, it seems that he's off the track because by dint of his Sayansi lineage, he is supposed to embark on the study of Vedanta. Perform austerities and engage in the study of Vedanta. 
But Lusitania was not doing that. And so, criticisms was leveled on him based on the fact that he was engaged <laughs> He was engaged in Sankirtan. Sometimes, you know, people wonder, and even our devotees, people criticize our devotees for, you know, why don't you do something else? Huh? Why just engage in, you know, dancing on the streets? Singing and dancing on the streets. <laughs> so, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu founded this Sankirtan movement. Uh, Golokera Prima Dan Harinam Sankirtana. The Sankirtan movement is an import. We like import, import goods. People now in India, they want, to buy, well, they want to use Japanese cars. Tata is producing very nice cars here. But, you know, the taste for imports <laughs> is there. We want, to, we want to engage in some activities or some enjoyment proclivities that are rooted in import, import duties or import goods. So this very Sankirtan movement is also an import from the spiritual world. For, so for those of us who like import goods, uh, I think that the Sankirtan movement is meant for us. So Lord Chaitanya was very, very, very expert in satisfying the needs of human society because he knows that human beings will like foreign goods. And the Sankirtan movement is from the spiritual world. He found that, a little bit background, he found that, and this Sankirtan movement is not based on just some religiosity. It's based on science. The congregational chanting of the holy name is based on science called synergy. Synergy means when two or three people or two or more people come together to do a particular thing, the result is always greater than the individuals separately doing that thing and bringing the results of those individuals together. And that is why Lord Chaitanya is on the basis of the the principle of synergy that Lord Chaitanya established the Hare Krishna movement. So, it is a science, scientific movement based on its foundation, even just by its foundation alone, is a scientific movement. And Lord Chaitanya, he did not only found a movement, he was also spreading this, uh, the chanting of the holy names. And when he was a child, when he was uh, Nimai, he would defeat so many people in arguments. <laughs> and so one of the things that intrigued Prakasananda Saraswati during his conversation with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, after the Maharashtra Brahmin and the other devotees, Chandrasekhar and others, pleaded that, look, you're being blasphemed and we can't tolerate it. This is giving us a lot of depressive feelings. They want to meet Lord Chaitanya. For all, ordinarily speaking, Lord Chaitanya wouldn't budge. He wouldn't care about people criticizing him. But, when the devotees became concerned, when the devotees were very much uh, worried about the whole blasphemy, Lord Chaitanya decided to take some action. And that is why when the Maharashtra Brahmin arranged for a meeting with the Mayavari Sanyansis, Lord Chaitanya kindly and willingly accepted. It was because of the devotees. He wanted to relieve the devotees from of the anxieties. A pure devotee, Lord Chaitanya has come to demonstrate the activities of a pure devotee. One of those qualities of a pure devotee is his para dukkha dukkhi. He's most aggrieved to see the suffering of other people. So when the devotees were feeling aggrieved, they were feeling very 
uh, sad about the blasphemy that was being met out onto Lochetania. Lochetania felt that feeling of reprieve. He wanted to get the devotees out of this type of depressive feelings. And hence he accepted the offer to meet with Maya Vadis, headed by Prakasananda. And so when this invitation was accepted by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as per the presentation of the Maharaj in Brahmin, uh, the Maharaj in Brahmin was very happy. Because the Maharaj in Brahmin, he knew the potency of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And his idea was if, Lord, if these people, if these Mayavadi seniors, his Prakasananda and his men, could just agree to meet Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, even the beauty of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu alone will steal their hearts. You know, uh, Krishna was always involved in some leelas of stealing. He stole the gopis' clothes. He stole the gopis' hearts. He stole his devotees' hearts. In fact, Bibi Mangal Thakur uh, wrote a very nice poem which describes the stealing activities of Lord, Lord Krishna. So, whether he comes at Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, a thief is a thief. He steals the same thief. And this time around, he steals the heart of people, of the non-devotees, and he makes them to chant the holy names. He steals even the hearts of lions. And so, when the desire of the Maharaj and Brahman was met by dint of the acceptance of the invitation to meet with the Maya Vadi his heart, the pleasure in his heart knew no bounds. So when they, came to, when they met, they were, the Maya Vadi is headed by Prakasananda. They were questioning Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu why he was doing what he was doing. <laughs> See, you're a sannyasi. You're a young sannyasi. You're supposed to sit down and study Vedanta. But you're following all these sentimental people and then just singing and dancing on the streets. How is that? Can you explain to us? The response from Lord Chaitanya was that his spiritual master had told him that he was a fool. He won't be able to comprehend Vedanta. And he gave him a mantra to salvage him from the situation. Just to chant this mantra. And forget about, you know, rigorous study of the Vedanta. Because he's a fool. So he told the, he told the Mayavadi singers, he said, headed by, he told this to the Mayavadi singers. But, Pakasananda, he knew the activities of Nimai Pandit. So, when he had this story from, this response from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, it didn't sink, it didn't sink with him because he thought, this, this is the same Nimai. He's not a fool. He's just playing games. He's not a fool. He was Nimai and he was defeating everybody he met. Every Pandit he met, he was defeating them. So how could he be a fool? But you see the humility of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as a sannyasi. He was so humble. And this is a good lesson for us, especially those who are carrying danda, those sannyasis. Humility was a watchword of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And what does humility imply? It implies that if even you are being accused, you still have to relegate yourself below the expectations of the accusers. This, is exact, this was exactly what Dr. Tema Mahaprabhu did. They were saying he was sentimental, but he said, oh, it's like saying, oh, is that just what you know me about, sentimental? I'm a fool. 
This is what my guru told me. So imagine someone comes to accuse you that you did something and you accepted before the person that, oh, I am worse than that. I do this, I do this. We want good names. We want good reputation. But Lord Chaitanya completely was oblivious to the reputation that people will expect in society. So I can imagine. They said Nima Pandit here comes after taking science. He took science because he wanted to impress on people. He wanted to easily convert people. He wanted to give Krishna prema, Krishna bhakti to people because the people will listen better when he took sanyas and after even attaining the highest order of sp uh, spiritual life. He says he was a fool. <laughs> so, we may recite we may decide these leaders. But what is the impact on our own personal lives? What is the impact on our personal dealings with other people around us? What is the impact of the leaders on our behavior? Does it help to modify our behavior? So, there are so many lessons we can learn from. This very episode of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. Normally, when people are highly learned, if you saw even a little thing against them, they will revolt. But here, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying, I am a fool. This is what my guru told me. And therefore, I, have, I can't understand Vedanta. I have no business in studying the Vedanta. But you know what? This is, and he explained to them what the mantra is doing to him. He told them, don't think I am just pretending. The mantra, the Hare Krishna Maha mantra, he told them, is what is impelling him to behave the way he was behaving. It's not a question of a willful action. It's just spontaneously. So, the power of the Holy Name, and except we come to that platform where we're chanting and we become intoxicated. We're chanting and we're having tears gushing out from our eyes. We're, we're chanting and we begin to dance like, mad, mad, like a madman or a mad woman. If we have not gotten to that stage, there's a need to be humble. But even Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was on the top, top most stage of Christian Prima. But he was so humble. What could, be more, what could be more of a humble mindset than someone saying something and you, are, you say you are worse than what they are accusing you of? And so the conversation went on. They asked Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu questions. The entire, it was like uh, in the court, so the accused person is put in a box and then they start prosecuting, they start examining the person, asking questions. That was, it was a similar case. It, it was a physical trial. Trial based on, que on quiz, questions. But Lord Chaitanya satisfied the Maya values. He didn't get angry. Imagine someone asking us questions of allegations and accusations. We may get offended. We may get angry. 
So there's a good lesson to learn here. The need for humility in preaching the mission of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as exemplified by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. And as the con conversation in, uh, continued, the disciple of Prakas and Saraswati glorified, eulogized the part of Bhakti so much so that the other uh, members of, his, of their cont contingency, they were one, they were uh, they were full of they were full of awe and reverence for Bhakti. And even uh, uh, Prakasananda Saraswati himself, when he started speaking and glorifying Bhakti, it was amazing. I, 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 I still remember specifically in this Chaitanya Charitamrita chapter uh, Madhya Lila chapter 25, text 32, if I'm not mistaken. Prakasananda Saraswati made a reference. He recounted the statements of Lord Brahma, where Lord Brahma was condemning the impersonal, impersonal liberation. And to quote Lord Brahma by dint of what Prakashananda said, he said, Yenye Ravidaksha Vimukta Maninas, Prawasta Bhavad, Awi Suda Buddha, Arya Krishna, Parampadam Tata, Patantia Do, Yusman, Dritanam, Nam, Yusman Angria. Yeah, the, in, in, what the, the verse implies is that Lord Brahma says, those who are on the path of impersonal liberation. And they feel that they are liberated. Lord Brahma says, they are not liberated. It's just simply due to impure intelligence. Are we Sudha Buddha? Because of impure intelligence, their intelligence becomes contaminated by dint of their own practice of austerity, heavy austerities. Can you imagine when intelligence could become contaminated by dint of austerities? But this is the assertion of Lord Brahma. He said, impersonalists, they are not liberated. Their so-called conception of self-liberation or with intent to merge into the Brahman Jyoti and they think that they are liberated. In fact, they have the conception that they are Narayan or Daridra Narayan, poor Narayan. Narayan cannot be poor. Narayan cannot be Daridra. You see, if we consider the situation of the Vaishnavas or the Vaishnavis or the Vaishnavism, uh, we are very small on the planet. We, po our population is very minuscule. Even in India, we have more Mayavadis than personalists. We have more impersonalists than, Maya than uh, personalists. In fact, those from the West who have come to who came to India to even seek for a spiritual culture, they, in most cases they encounter the impersonalists because they are all pervading. They are all pervasive. So, in the conversation, Lord Chaitanya accepted a humble position, explicated and responded to all of the queries of the Mayavadi seances. And because of his patience, because of his erudition, he, re, he recounted several, you know, Vedic assertions that, only speaking, the Chattu Sloki, the Atmaram verse, it interpreted in several different ways. So how could someone who called himself a fool act in that way? So what the thought of Prakasadana uh, Saraswati was very correct. Because when Lord Chaitanya said, <laughs> he said he was a fool, and the Guru said he was a fool, he shouldn't study the, the Vedanta. That's why he's engaged in the so-called sentimentality on the streets. Prakasananda, he was very intelligent. He didn't buy the idea because he knew this was Nimai. So, we understand how this Mayavadis, 
because of their conviction on, on the part of Bakshi, by dint of the interactions. You see, this is, this is one issue that, again, we don't seem to, majority of, majority of us don't seem to up or comprehend. Uh, this is the part of Sangha association. Now, we say these words or we repeat these technologies all the time, but they are not just religious assertions because even the very concept of the phenomenon of association is of scientific, uh, of, it's of scientific proof. Now, in, in physics, that's what we call osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure determines or is able to let us know how association is so impactful. Now, that experiment of osmotic pressure is based on you have two solutions. The two solutions are separated by a thin membrane. One is highly concentrated. One is not. And when you keep these two solutions side by side, separated by a membrane, after a few number of hours, you come and watch, you come and check, you see that the strong solution has drawn a weaker solution, completely almost empty. That's what association does. So, by association with Lord Chitaya Mahaprabhu, the Maya Vadis became purified. And they joined, even, they even joined in the Harinam party of Lord Chitaya Mahaprabhu. And when the inhabitants of the residents of Varanasi got to understand that uh, Prakasadanda is now been converted, has been converted by Lord Chitaya Mahaprabhu, you know, whatever a great man does, a common man follows. <laughs> Lord Krishna said that in the Gita. And in fact, in those days, when, uh, when, two, when two sects or two leaders, spiritual leaders, had a debate, and the one who is defeated surrenders to the one who defeats him with all of his or her followers. And that was how all the Mayavadis, all the residents of Varanasi, they became followers of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because their leader, Prakasananda Saraswati, was now a follower, was uh, converted to Vaishnavism, and therefore all of the uh, Varanasi residents, they became Vaishnavas. They became followers of Lord Chaitanya's movement. And this is not strange because the Lord could even make lions and deers chant the holy names. What to speak of human beings? You could affect the animals of high density ignorance. If the Lord could even change, purify the animals in Jairakanda for it, to chant Krishna's names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. Human beings are supposed to have intelligent discrimination. The consciousness of even the, the, the most dull-witted human being cannot be compared to an animal. But Lord Chitain was able to convert even animals. He was able to have an impact on the animals. And this is, again, the power of environment. Like we go to the, we go to the holy dam, or we go to the temple, or we go to the altar. You know, these are special environments. Why we love going to the temple? Why we love going to the holy dam? Why we love going to different theaters? The, because we have a belief that we're going to be purified by just by going to those places. Those are places that have high-profile spiritual energies by dint of the activities that are always being performed in those places. Again, I would like to draw science into this. Now, this is not just our going to the holy places 
It's not just some type of religious a belief or religious dogma. There is, there's been a scientific study that was conducted you know, several years ago by Professor Le a German psychologist called Professor Lewin. He developed the field theory, and the field theory stipulates that the environment impacts on our behavior. I mean, it's like someone comes to Mayapur, whether he chants or he, do, or he doesn't chant, whether he's a devotee or he's not a devotee, he has accrued a lot of pious merit just by coming to Mayapur. And so the environment that we are living in impacts on our lives. Lord Chaitanya created an environment even in the Jerakanda forest. By, going, by passing through the Jerakanda forest, it, the, the whole of the lions and the other animals in the, in the, in the forest could chant. By having a dialogue, a discussion with the, the Mayavadis in Varanasi, the whole of the Mayavadis become purified. Again, the principle of environment. Environment constitutes of people. And so, we have to understand how this Krishna consciousness is all scientific. Lord Chaitanya founded this movement on the basis of science. On the basis of synergy. And a lot of people turn to Krishna consciousness or they become converted or they had a fortune of practicing Krishna consciousness by associating with devotees. So, Sangha, the Sankirtan movement, and so many other things, they are based on scientific values. And therefore, the Krishna consciousness movement is not another religion. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to establish the Sankirtan movement for all and sundry to have a leverage in the consciousness. And so, we may say that the residents of Varanasi, oh, they were very lucky they met Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and that is why they had that great fortune. But Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is still here by dint of his vani. His sasakam calls, speaks louder than words. If we even follow these instructions that he left behind, eight very profound instructions. We may recite these instructions every morning, but you know, implementation of those teachings is another thing that could allow us to have the ruchi that we, we, that we needed dearly in our lives. So, we're happy that we had a chance to be able to come to hang out with all of you here. And we'd like to stop here. Maybe there are some comments or some questions. Come here. Come. Listen, I'm, pray, I'm very pleased to you, meet. <laughs> That's reason. Yeah. Yeah, any questions? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Sometimes we don't have the ability to um, exert the influence on someone, but uh, uh, how do you propose that our movement uh, would get, uh, like Srila Prabhupada and Krishna before him has said, that we should influence the leaders of the world, right? But if we don't have access, is there some strategy that you propose personally? How do we do that? Uh, to yeah. get to them, please yeah. explain. That, that's a nice, that's a nice question, and uh, you know one of the major things that a number of world religious leaders do is to have to create avenues where they can have impact on world leaders or people in high profile position. Now the Harinam Sankirtan is very purifying. We go into the streets, we purify the environment. And even the people who are not with, within reach, they get purified. That is the power. In fact, there was some scientific uh, uh, research that was conducted in Washington, D.C., I think in 1990, not by devotees, but people chanting holy names, 
Um, they were able to have that period, they, they measure the crime rate in D.C. area, and they find that the crime rate reduced. So even people who are not within close proximity, they benefit. Now, the question is, what about people who are locked up in their offices? They are high-profile people, you know. What do we do? Yeah, we also have to have high-profile people who will reach out to them. <laughs> Because these people, they're not, they're not, they don't walk on the streets. And so, one of the strategies, um, those are, these are some of the things that I do. I remember some years back, I was in Mayapur here, and uh, one devotee, two devotees came to meet me. They're from the south, from south in South America. They're from South America. They wanted me to come to their country. So, and, and, Two ladies were standing by, by the corner. So they were speaking to me. They, they wanted to give me a ticket to come to the country. So I told them, <laughs> I told them, very funny. I told them that if you want, if you want a black swami to come and help in the preaching, I can get some, someone, I can arrange for somebody to come. And they said, no, we need you. I said, if you need me, this is what I want. And I made a real heavy demand. Real heavy demand. I said, you go going to, you, you arrange for me to meet the president of your country. Arrange for me to meet the prime minister of your country. The minister for agriculture. The police chief. I, I gave him so many challenging tasks. So, those two ladies, not knowing is the why they're the wives of those two gentlemen who were talking with me. So, they were laughing at their husbands. Because they never have met some, someone to invite them and then make this type of high demands. So, I just dismissed them. I left, I left India, I think I was in one other continent, I don't know whether in, uh, in, uh, in Africa or someplace. And then the home I used to stay in New York, you know, the lady called me on the phone. <laughs> she called me on the phone and said, come back to the U.S. <laughs> so I came back to the U.S. and she said that we have to go to South America, that we have some special programs. I said, but some devotees have met me and I explained to them why I wouldn't go there. Except they had some external programs. I said, I didn't want to just come, spend their, spend their ticket money to come. And it's the same thing. The, what they want me to come and do is what any, any devotee in the movement who has spent six months in the movement and the study purpose but can do. They can give the Sunday class and whatever. why spend their money on me to come to your country based on that. So she said, she told me uh, that Oh, no, 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 no. There's, there's some arrangement to meet all of your demands. They're going to arrange for, the, for you to meet the president of the country. They're going to arrange for you to meet the, <laughs> the minister of agriculture. And it, it was like a joke. So we went. And for, you know, by Christian special arrangement, these guys, they, they'd arrange for me, the pres to me, for me to meet the president of the country, the minister of agriculture, some police chief and the prime minister. And then, each day, I stay, and because that time I, my schedule was very tight, so I spent only six days in the, con in the country. But each day, we had, in some days, we had like six TV programs, some of them uh, live and some of them recorded. And we met with the president, we gave him a set of Prabhupada's books. I went there with uh, one of Prabhupada's disciples. Uh, he's late now, she's late. And, uh, and another group of devotees. And so it was, very, it was very exciting because the gentleman, he was pretty young. The president of the country was pretty young at that time. And we had good exchanges. He was very pleased. And he told me, he, before, he said before we came to his office, he said he has watched me on TV. <laughs> you, know, you know, the top shots, if someone wants to see them, they go to check their background. And so he had gone to already excavate my background, and he, he, all was, he was also very desperate to meet with me. So we had that meeting, and it was a big boost for the devotees in that country. And the idea is that when we have those type of contacts, it signals that we are reaching out for high-profile people, and the common people, or even the middle-class people, they respect and will want to hear about our philosophy because we have made a big catch in the country. They are, they are head of state. And so, 
one of the strategies that we can impl implement in trying to reach out high profile people is that we get we acquire high profile skills we should encourage our young devotees our children to have high profile skills because when they have high profile skills in the offices where they are working with the, the colleagues who are high profile personalities their, their values are not comparable to the values of their colleagues and their colleagues will naturally want to befriend them will want to be like them and sometimes you don't even need to preach I remember the case of one uh, IT research fellow in South Africa. I was living with her and her husband. And she told me the story. She was a researcher working with the richest firm. And she told me the story how she was the only richest fellow of, of, from ISCON in that office. And one day, uh, they, all of them, they know her values. What she does, what she doesn't. And so one day, one of her fellow colleagues, she just came to her and asked that she taught her bhakti yoga. That's how she taught the woman how to chant. And subsequent days, when it is time for break, when other or researchers, when other scientists had gone out for you know uh, eating and drinking, they would stay under a shed in the compound to chant Hare Krishna. So this is a typical example of how when we have one high-profile personality in some location, in some office, it has a major influence on the environment. It has a major influence on their colleagues. It has a major influence on the workers and their subordinates in that very office or in that very environment. You don't need to do so much of preaching to be able to bring them to Krishna consciousness. So, the strategy basically is, in fact, see, back to Titi Swami, my Guru Maharaj, he asked me, he asked me to go and do a PhD. He was very, very strategic, a very, very strategic thinker. And so now, I move into places, I go to meet professors, and I remember one time, I was pretty young, <laughs> talking about strategies on how to meet high-profile people. I was pretty young, I was a brahmachari, young at that time. I went to meet one, uh, one professor. He was the head of the Department of Philosophy and Religion in a federal university. I put on Doti, Tilak, and all this stuff. So I went to meet him and I request that he gives me a, uh, a chance to speak to his final year students. And the guy, he just looked at me up, down, up, down. And he told me, we don't do this here. In other words, get away. What did I do? At that time, I had 25 publications in peer-reviewed journals. So I told him that, excuse me, sir, but I have 25 publications in peer-reviewed journals in five years. I mean, in three years. He was shocked. That is never doable in academia. You can only publish maybe one paper in a year not 25 publications in three years. Then, that dawned on him, he said, can I see some of those papers? Can I see some of those publications? The next day I came to him with three journals from the most reputed university in the country. And I showed him my publications. And then, the whole thing, it took a new dimension, 360 degrees U-turn. He asked me, when are you coming to give your presentation? So, this is my own lived experience. And therefore, if we want some high profile people, we should encourage some of our young children, some of our children, to go for high profile skills. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Ranavat Pranam. Maharaj Shila Prabhupada uh, wrote uh, Chaitanya Chaitamitra, translated Chaitanya Chaitamitra, even living uh, 13 chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam. 
he wanted to complete but he knew that chetana chaitamito needs to be translated by him only but i've seen that chetana chaitamito full of this chapter i've just reading the chapter 25 number chapter of madhya leela that you spoke about the summary so maharaj uh, my query is that why we cannot accord the verses because it's a bengali verses popad wrote translations of the bengali verses so in the class we uh, why we can't uh, quote the verses or recite the verses so that is my query okay uh, see i'm not a bengali no it That's is written in english Ma maharaj everything is english okay no no the, you said it is written in bengali maharaj it is in uh, english uh, that chaitanya chaitamrita is written in english so in the class or in the lecture why can't we recite some verses that is oh, my query okay see i did, they didn't tell me the format of this very uh, forum if they tell me the format that you have to bring you know uh, a book and then you start reading and, and you know sharing that with the devotees it would have been easier for me than speaking of hand okay <laughs> like you give bagwatam class the bagwatam is there and you make ref i mean you read from the bagwatam you read the papas papas etc lot chetan chetamita also has purports proper has written a number of uh, pop, uh, one uh, valuable purpose to the chetan chetamita so yeah and if we read those purports they are very much uh, leverage into our spiritual spiritual involvement so yeah it is important that we utilize the books that proper are written for our own spiritual uh, elevation and it is also very important that in some cases when we go to meet people outside there we may not be carrying the books if we're not carrying the books we should be able to give them the essence of what the books contain does it make some sense to you does it make some sense to you does it make some sense to you Hare Krishna. Yeah. Any other comments? One more question. Huh? Maharaj, I wanted to say that the Chaitanya Chaitamita verses are so sweet, so nectarian. Uh, we may not recite hundred or two hundred verses, but we can recite some verses, like three, four, five verses. to uh, release the nectar so that is my you know humble request okay who can who can do that next time thank you maharaj thank you any other question hari krishna maharaj dandav pranam thank you for the enlightening lecture and past times from chetanya mahaprabhu uh, it was really purifying and really coming from your mouth it was really enriching maharaj my question is that according to the 10 uh, offenses against the holy name there is one offense that we should not preach to the atheist people uh, but we hear in mahaprabhu leela that he was preaching to the mayavadis and <coughs> so what should be our approach when we come across such kind of people like mayavadis or impersonalists or atheists please give us some light maharaj thank you we should not discriminate when we are preaching but for mayavadis you know lord chaitanya i mean specifically uh demonstrated that they could also be changed but we are not lord chaitanya and when we are meeting such people see the mayavadis they're very astute a proper word of the devotee one, one of the brahmacharis who was here tall huge guy he's late now he told me he was a mayavadi sanyasi and he made proper <laughs> he challenged proper <laughs> he challenged proper and they argued back, back and forth proper defeated him so he became a brahmachari in iskon you remember that, that devotee's name a tall one who was in brahmachari ashram he's he's late now He was a, he told me his story he was a mayavadi sanyasi but then when he challenged prabhupad 
Prabhupada defeated him in all the arguments. And so he surrendered to Prabhupada. That was the tradition in those days. So, the point is that Maya Vadis, they're very, very astute in philosophy. So if someone is not very advanced, they may as well be careful because they could also make you a Maya Vadi. <laughs> they could also make you a Maya Vadi. Because they have so much of convincing ideologies that if we are not very astute, we can begin to contemplate that what they are telling us is something, is something to think about. But essentially, yes, we should preach to each and every one. And if we are not tough enough, I remember my case, I had a weakness of, you know, having to carry out instructions or obeying people in my family. And so when I get involved in Krishna consciousness, for 16 years, one six, I never had contact with family members. And then by the time I, did, I, I, I thought that, okay, now I can go and meet them, they can't do me anything. <laughs> so I went with some devotees, and, you know, they didn't even forget about me. <laughs> so the, my point is that if you can convince the Maya Vadis, no problem. But be careful, and the association could be very, deli uh, uh, could be very uh, deleterious, could be very dangerous. The association of the Maya Vadis could be very dangerous. So we should be careful. Does it make some sense to you? Hare, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dhanavad Pranam. Thanks for a wonderful class. Uh, so my one question is that, uh, like as uh, Chetan Mahaprabhu used to say always, like, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. So as Chetan Mahaprabhu always used to say that I am full, I, I don't know like how to study Vedas, Pevan Sarvam Bhattacharya, he always used to say, like, I am full and full, always. And as you said, like, uh, in Krishna Consciousness Movement, we have to become a scholar. And, uh, like, uh, in that way, we can preach uh, to the more people. Even, like, uh, people can get attracted, like, uh, by becoming a scholar. So, uh, Maharaj, do you have, like, any, uh, uh, like, uh, how do you feel about that? Like, how, when we are preaching in, like, some village area or something like that, then how we can relate this scholar to the, like, uh, Chaitanya Mahapurut, how he used to say. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Lord himself. <laughs> he can do anything, okay? He can say he's a fool. If, if you go and tell people, you're preaching and they're going to tell people, hey, look, uh, ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. I'm a great fool, you know? <laughs> they won't listen to you, no? Okay. <laughs> So we should know, we should not imitate Mahaprabhu. We should be preachers, we should be practical. We should accept what is, you know, about what is going to be enhancing to the mission of Srila Prabhupada. Not that, you know, I, I did some horrible things also in, in the past. Like I remember someone came to accuse me of uh, myself and one other devotee when I was a temple manager of, uh, uh, what do you call it, aiding and abetting drugs. He said, you people are keeping guests in your guest room because they give you money for donations for your temple construction. In your guest room because they give you money for donations for your temple construction. So, that is a very serious... Then, instead of being angry with him, I told him, Oh, Prabhu, is that all you know about me? Only drugs? I even kill people, you don't know? Instead of being angry with him, I told him, Oh, Prabhu, is that all you know about me? Only drugs? I even kill people. You don't know? <laughs> so he was completely, you know, taken aback. So yeah, but you don't go and tell people, you have to examine the situation. You don't go and tell people in the public that, you know, I'm a fool. They don't, what's the idea of your preaching? If you're a fool, I won't listen to you. Even when so Lord Chaitanya told uh, Prakasananda that he was, a, he was a fool, that Lord Chaitanya was a fool. Lord, Prakasananda did not accept that hook, line, and sinker. He knew this is Nimai, the guy who defeated so many pandits. How could he say he's a fool? So try to understand the, 
in depth of that story. All right. I'm so sorry. I'm called by nature. <laughs> okay. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> thank you, Maharaj, for a wonderful class. So we all thank to Prabhu uh, Maharaj by chanting three times, Hari Bol! <clears throat> Louder! Hari Bol! Hari Bol! <clears throat> okay, thank you very much, all of you, for attending this class, all the classes since morning. So now today, today is Shavanotsav's second day we have uh, finished. Tomorrow, 15th February, as usual, 10 o'clock, Bhajan Kirtan will be there. We'll be giving on the process of devotional service. And 12 to 1.30, devotional service. Hari Prabhu, Hari Prabhu, of Junior Haridas, Junior Haridas. And 5.30 p.m. to 7, His Holiness Chandramali Swami, the glories of Haridas Thakur and His passing. 7 to 8.30, His Grace Pancharatna Prabhu, the meeting of Lord Chaitanya and Raghunath Das Goswami. So, we welcome all of you on time tomorrow morning.